Hello, welcome back. So we're now gonna go through a couple examples of U substitution. In the previous video, we went through a bunch of integrals that we already know, and we went through the concept of integration using U substitution. Now we're gonna put it in action. In this first example here, we have um, x squared times the um, square root of one plus x cubed. And it's our job to be able to find the antiderivative of that. And then this is a definite integral. So we're looking for the area under that curve between x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay. Um, there'll be, there'll be, uh, when you have a definite integral, you'll see that there's two options that you can take. For this example, we'll take the first option of doing a limit switch. We're going to change the variables from x's into u's. And then what we're going to do is switch the limits as well. These are x numbers. we got to figure out what the new numbers are in u. Changing variables. Okay. So what we do is we isolate these parts of the integral. We have the radical, and then we have this x squared. I'm going to put it at the end. And so remember the concept. There's an inside function. And the derivative of that inside function may not be exactly the outside function, but it's a constant multiple of the outside function. So what would you call inside? It'd be the what's underneath the radical. Not the radical, but what's underneath the radical. U should be equal to 1 plus x cubed. Okay? And that would simplify that part. The whole part is, the whole thing is to get simplified. Uh, that radical, that, that becomes radical U, the square root of U. What about this other part that we have to sub for that as well? The dx is important. We have to sub for it. The x squared, we have to sub for it. And so we take the derivative. du, the derivative of u. If you want to write it as du dx, you can, and then take 3x squared, and then multiply by dx. I just like to write it in one line like this. The derivative of u is 3x squared dx. Now, you have to substitute for x squared dx. So you should divide by 3 on both sides. Now you know exactly how to replace x squared dx. It's with one third of du. Okay, this is a good point to do the limit switch. So we have, um, I, like, I like doing a nice organized chart. Our upper limit is x equals two, and our lower limit is x equals zero. Our substitution is the fact that u should be one plus x cubed. So cube the x and add one, you'll have the u. Cube the 2 and add 1, you'll have the new u. 8 plus 1, 9. Cube 0 and add 1, that's just going to be 1. We are ready to write down our new integral with our new bounds. The radical 1 plus x cubed becomes square root of u. The x squared dx becomes 1 third du. The bounds become 1 and 9. We're ready. This is a nice, simpler integral. We traded our integral in for a nice, simple integral. We're going to treat it as a power rule in reverse question. Pull the one-third out, please. If you ever have constants in your integrals, please pull them out. Okay? Now, what is the antiderivative of u to the half? We went from radical u to u to the half because we would need to work this power rule in reverse where we add 1 to the exponent. So radical symbols do you no good, really, when it's time to take the antiderivative. And, and so, yeah, add 1 to 1 half, you'll get 3 halves. But remember, you're supposed to divide by that same thing. Now, dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. So you have the 1 third who's already out there from the u sub. This 2 thirds is out there from the power rule in reverse where we divide by 3 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. We can put those constants together. I like to put my square brackets around the actual function that I'm plugging in. If there's constants, I want to pull them out so I don't have the const constants in both of my you know, upper and lower limit evaluations. All right, so let's call it 2 ninths. Let's put 9 to the 3 halves and subtract 1 to the 3 halves. What does it mean to raise something to the 3 halves? It means that you have it to the one and you're multiplying it to the one half. That's the best way to think about it. Anything to the three halves is that guy rad, that guy. So nine to the three halves is nine rad nine. One to any power is just a one, but here it is written as one rad one. 
What is 9 rad 9? That's a 27, because it's 9 times 3. 27 minus 1, that's a 26. Double 26, that's a 52. Final answer, 52 over 9. Okay, it took a little longer than I wanted, but that's okay. What we did with this option was a limit switch with example one. Let's try to go through example two next, where we won't do a limit switch. Don't know if we'll be able to get it done. Well, let's see. We have cotan x times cosecant squared x. Interesting in going from pi over six to pi over four. Okay, and we're, we're not going to do a limit switch here. Okay. All right, great. Uh, and, and, and these aren't at the top of your, you know, on the top of your memory, but, uh, yeah, cotan X is derivative is negative cosecant squared X. So if you let U be equal to cotan X, DU will be negative cosecant squared X DX. You have to sub for cosecant squared. So times by negative one, just like you divided by three, we could divide by negative one here. Now we know about the replacement to cosecant squared, x dx, and we know about the replacement to cotan x. So we have cotan x's replacement is u, cosecant squared x dx's replacement is negative du. And that's negative one, we could pull that out, it's a constant like that one third and two thirds were, we could pull them all the way out. And now we have the most simple integral of all. What, what function has u as its derivative? It's u squared over 2. Notice my integrals do not have bounds. When you're not doing a limit switch and you work the integral out, you do it as if it's indefinite, and then you switch back and you plug in the original bounds. So negative u squared over 2, technically plus a constant, but we don't need that here. And so let's sub back in. What was u? u was cotangent x. So negative one half cotangent of x who is squared. That negative one half should be out of there outside. And cotan, I just don't know cotan. I, I know sine, I know cosine. Cotan is not at the top of my memory. So, so I want to uh, trade it in, right? Um, what is cotan? It's the reciprocal of tan. If tan is sine over cosine, then cotan is cosine over sine. So this is the best way to write it. Now we're ready to plug it. Let's do this off on the side so we won't mess up the flow of our problem. Off on the side here, how do we do the cosine of pi over four and divide that by the sine of pi over four? Well, they're the same, right? Cosine, sine for pi over four, they're the same. So you just get a one. For pi over six, what happens is the cosine of pi over six is root three over two while the sine of pi over 6 is a half, and when you divide those, you get a root 3. Now, this is before squaring or anything like that. This is just getting what the, what the value is, but it's necessary for us to square each. So you square a 1, you get 1. You square a root 3, you get 3. And we're done. We have a negative 1 half times the quantity of 1 minus 3. That's a negative two. Negative one half times a negative two. The area under this curve is exactly equal to one. We did two examples. One where we did a we did a limit switch, and one where we decided not to do the limit switch. Good work. All right. Let's try to get you used to u substitution. One part is the inside function, the other part is the outside function. The derivative of the inside function is pretty much the outside function or a constant multiple of it. All right. In the next video, we do we tackle some more difficult questions. These are like starters to get your feet wet, but they're not what I would call difficult. Um, I would say easy or medium level of difficulty. Okay. All right. Thank you. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey. And uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. And we will... Uh, I will definitely see you in the next video.